Hey, what's up? It's Jared. Today we are in Notion and we're going to build an asset manager so you can keep track of the things that you own, things that are in your possession for any reason, whether you just want a nice way to keep track of all the things that you uh, have in your possession. Um, I think it's also important for just if you have insurance and you have a loss, being able to prove that you own something and having access to all of that information. If you have a lot of warranties on your items and things that you know you typically uh, might need to check in on, having a nice place for all of this information to exist is great. And that is exactly what I've built here. So I'm gonna show you how I built it and we're going to walk through adding an item to this list as well using my smartphone, which is the typical way that I would be adding items here because I utilize the camera on my smartphone. And so let's dive in. Right now we're looking at a gallery view of my assets and I still have a few that I need to get photos for and link up, but for the most part, I've got some items in here and this is gonna be an ongoing process. This is something that I should have done a long time ago, but now that I am doing it, it's just gonna be a process of, oh, hey, there's that item. Is it in my asset manager yet? And if it's not, then I can add it. So we're viewing a gallery view. We'll talk about views a little bit later in this video. Let's start with um, view by latest. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the sort method that I had in here. So view by latest is a sort of what is the latest item to the oldest item that I have in my list here. And uh, so I need to actually keep the correct sort for that um, date acquired descending and so that's got them in the right order now so with the field here what i went with is a name field that's just the standard name field i added a date column here as a field so that i can set the date manually and it's important to choose that method so rather than choosing the advanced which is created time uh, we would want to set the actual date so that I mean, if I added something from a year ago or I wanted to add something that I've owned for a while, I can just select the date automatically. I then chose a files and media option here and labeled it photos so that I can add photos of the item itself. Things that I typically am putting in these photos, for example, with a camera, I've got the front of the camera, I've got the bottom of the camera that shows the serial number, and then the back of the camera. And so just a couple of different photos here. And uh, for another camera, for example, this one, I actually took a picture of the box and I'll, I'll talk about this other column as we get a little further through the list here. Underneath type, I have a multi-select and under the type here, I can choose what it falls under, camera, equipment, hardware, tool, and of course I'll add more as uh, more types as I continue to build out this list. I've just kind of been adding things that are in my office essentially. And so in doing that, I'm just grabbing things that are near me. And most of those things are cameras and hardware and stuff like that that I utilize. But as I add more items, I can add more uh, to the multi-select. And, and the reason it's a multi-select is because some of these items might fall under two different categories. Um, for example, this camera microphone here, I have it under hardware, but I also could add it under camera as well, and it could be under two categories, uh, essentially. So type is a multi-select. I have the manufacturer listed in here, and I'm not sure if I'll end up keeping this or not. I probably will because I like to be able to sort by uh, a manufacturer, like show me all the Apple products I've ever had or show me all the Sony products. But this isn't going to be realistic to add. It's, it's just a single select option right now. So it's not a multi-select. It's just a single select. And to add every manufacturer of everything that I've that I own would be crazy. This list would be insanely long. And it doesn't necessarily make sense to do that for things that I only own like one of. So if a item, if I own more than maybe like two or three items from that manufacturer, I will add it as a manufacturer. Otherwise, I will just list it as other and then just choose other. So for example, this camera cage that I have for my A6400 camera uh, from UU Rig. I only own like two camera little cages from UU Rig, and I'm not going to add them in as a manufacturer. It just doesn't make sense. So I'll list them under other. 
Now this area here, it's a category of either business or personal. So I can easily look between what items are business or personal. Um, typically when I buy something, I classify it as whether or not it's gonna be a business use item or a personal item. Also, because I have a uh, home insurance for the items that are in my home, but then I have business insurance for the items that are uh, for business use, I would need to be able to sort that easily. So for me, having uh, business and personal would be good. Um, for you, if you had maybe two different homes, uh, like a vacation home or something, things where you might need to separate this by the insurance policy that would cover it or you know something like that you kind of have to separate it into different areas of your life you would then choose uh, give it a select option um, and then you know add in some items there now the status is pretty important for me because i tend to utilize something for a little while especially technology and cameras and then i get rid of them and buy the next version and so i wanted to know what the status is on the particular things that i own is it something that i currently own did i return it is it expired did i sell it is it damaged did i dispose of it did I donate it or is it on loan? And so I've got this list here and I can easily see uh, what it is. Uh, I may even add where it is uh, in the future, but that's getting a little carried away because I don't typically have too many places that I could keep something. It's usually either at my office or at home. And so uh, a location might be another interesting thing. I may do that if I decided to take my asset manager and get specific with just my camera gear. Um, because in the past when I would hire uh, other photographers and, and you know people to go out and shoot video for me, I would send them with camera gear. And it was always kind of tricky to keep track of where all of my equipment was. So I might actually add like a location or like where is it located uh, column in the future. But for right now, it's just a select option. And I've got these different categories here. Uh, so if I sell something, for example, this 15 inch MacBook Pro that I sold uh, earlier this year to get the 16 inch MacBook Pro, when I sold my 15 inch, I would just uh, change it from owned to sold. And so that way I know that, okay, well, that's something that I did own, but now I don't own it anymore, but it is still listed in my asset manager um, so that I could reference back. And I think that that's important too, uh, because in the past, you know, I would have to go and dig through old receipts that I'd scanned and filed away. And so it's just much easier, I think, to have all of that here. Now, the next column is a documents column. Um, I originally was going to call this proof of purchase just so that I can have like a picture of the back of the package or something like that where the barcode is in the UPC. Uh, so now I changed it to documents because I did recently just purchase a cargo trailer that uh, I bought because we're going to be moving and I'm going to utilize this cargo trailer so that we can move our stuff from California to Montana. And so I have some documentation in here for the trailer. I have uh, the proof of purchase for the trailer that I'm going to need when I want to go and register the trailer in Montana. Right now it's registered in California. And then I also have uh, another document that came with it that has some information about this, the trailer that I didn't want to have to keep like readily available. Um, and so any documents that have to do with the trailer, I can have it here. I'm also probably going to add a photo of the registration to the trailer just so that I can have it. And so any document that is related to the particular product, I will keep here and I have most of like the the packaging for the products that I've purchased I still have those they're just all in boxes and so when I get to Montana and I'm opening up all of those boxes I will start taking pictures and kind of filling in this area here um, and then I have all of that stuff documented which is great there's no argument as to whether or not I own something because I've got pictures of it I've got documentation of the packaging or some proof of purchase. And then in the last column here, this is a relational database link to my expense tracker. So all of these items that are linked here will actually take me to my expense log so that I could see the entry in the expense log. Now, this may seem a little redundant because I've got a magic keyboard for iPad Pro 12.9 inch 
uh, fourth gen here. But then if I click on the receipt, I've got the basically the same exact entry. And then if I click on that, I've got the information about the actual purchase. Now, the reason that I'm keeping these separate, and I've kind of been debating and battling with myself as to what I should do there, because it would be very easy for me just in my expense log that I talked about building in a previous video to just add a column and say like, what is the status? Do I own this? You know, adding that status, that asset status. Um, and then, you know, I've already have uh, it categorized as business or personal. And so I can add a couple more columns here and essentially manage my assets here as well. But I wanted a nice, pretty cool view for my assets. And that is the gallery view of my assets. And I, so I wanted the gallery view to be like this. And I also wanted it to be more about the item. And so that's why I decided to do it this way. I don't necessarily know if I'll keep it this way. I may end up down the road merging them, but for right now, this is the way I'm doing it. And I'm doing it more specifically this way because I have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of more expensive items like cameras and stuff that I want to keep organized and I want to be able to view it really easily. Under my expense log, there are a ton of entries. This is just the last seven days, but there are a ton of entries. If I go and view all of the entries that are here, there are 704 right now entries um, in the expense log. And that's a big database. And just to be totally honest with all of you guys, big databases like that are a little slow in Notion right now. I'm hoping that in the future they will beef up the speed of things or continue to invest in beefing up the speed of Notion. But big databases get a little slow and a little clunky. And so if I have too many custom views so that I can limit fields and make my expense log look like the way that I want it to look for assets, it's, it's just going to be a little slow. And so I'm doing it this way right now doesn't mean that it is the best way, but the reason that I'm making this video, and then of course I made the expense log that I showed all of you uh, in the last video, is so that you can learn a little bit about Notion and figure out the best way to manage all the things in your life. So I think it's really important to have an asset manager like this. Um, this is just the current view all by latest, but you can also create a calendar view and then you can see all of your items uh, as you've purchased them on a calendar. Might not be uh, as exciting as viewing your receipts or your expenses on a calendar, but I thought it would be neat to put them there. And of course, with the properties, um, I can go and add in like the little photo of it as well. I can add the area. Um, and uh, that's probably all that really makes sense to have here, but that makes it a little bit more fun to look at. Uh, of course, the view that I like the most is the gallery view because I can see a nice photo here. And just to show you how I have that set up, I have the sort set to date acquired by descending. And then underneath properties, I have set the card preview to photos. So that's my photos column. And then I set the card size to small. I have fit image off because otherwise it just doesn't look as good. Um, I have the name set so it shows the name. I have the date acquired so that I can see the date. And then I have the type so that I can see the type of item that it is. And that makes for a fun view, uh, viewing all of my items. And of course, there are more than one photo for most of these items. And so for that situation, I would then need to click on the item and then I can click on the image and I can see the images right there um, and, uh, and look at the information. And then of course, if there's any documentation, for example, with uh, where is the camera that I do have some documentation. So right here, I've got the two photos. I have a photo of the box. And then most of the items are also linking to the, uh, the receipt as well or the expense and I can click on that and then click here and see the actual expense as well. So this is becoming a nice tool for me to have to not only track all of my expenses and, and the things that I'm spending money on in all aspects of my life, but also track the assets that I have, the things that are worth money that are not consumables that like something that you're going to, you know, eat and then be done with. 
these are things that maintain value, that have value, meaning that if I if I take care of them, I could turn around and sell them <laughs> still in the future. So I like to be able to track that stuff. So I hope that this video helped you uh, learn a little bit more about Notion. In another video, I am going to, as soon as I get this a little more dialed in, I am going to create a, a financials dashboard that has some information about my assets and my expenses. And I'm also working on a budgeting layout as well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already and hit that bell to turn on notifications. And I do hope to see you back in the next one. But until then, take care.